Hello and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker. I am here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. And today we look at Propaganda by Edward Burns and Mark Miller. In a world under the influence of propaganda exp experts, how does a costly truth get out into the world as truth when is the idea no longer just a crackpot theory, a paranoid delusion of the left or the right, but something that must be and finally is accepted? Who are the men who, without our realizing it, give us our ideas, tell us whom to admire and whom to despise, what to believe about the ownership of public utilities, about the tariff, about the price of rubber, about the Dawes plan about immigration. Tell us how our houses should be designed, what furniture we should put in there, what menus we should serve at our tables, what kind of shirts we must wear, what sports we should indulge in, what plays we should see, what charities we should support, what pictures we should admire, what slang we should affect, what jokes we should laugh at. The propagandists who specialize in interpreting enterprises and ideas to the public and interpreting the public to the propagators of new enterprises and ideas has become to be known by the name of Public Relations Council. In law, the judge and jury hold the deciding balance of power in public opinion the Public Relations Council is judge and jury because through his pleading of the case, the public may accede its opinion in judgment. Men are rarely aware of the real reasons which motivate their actions. A man may believe that he buys a motor car because after careful study of the technical features of all makes on the market, he has concluded that this is the best model. He is almost certainly fooling himself. He bought it, perhaps, because a friend whose financial acumen he respects bought one last week, or because his neighbors believe he was not able to afford the car of that class, or because its colors are those of his college fraternity. A thing may be desired not for its intrinsic worth or usefulness, but because he has unconsciously become to see in it a symbol of something else, the desire for which he is ashamed to admit to himself. Human desires are the stem which makes the social machine work. Only by understanding them can the propagandists control the vast, loose-jointed mechanism which is modern society. The competing manufacturer is put in a position either to overemphasize an already exaggerated emphasis or of letting the overemphasis of his competitor take away his markets. The teacher finds himself in a world in which the emphasis is put on those objective goals and those objective attainments which are prized by the society. He himself is but moderately or poorly paid, judging himself by the standards and common acceptance. He cannot feel but a sense of inferiority because he finds himself continuously being compared in minds of his own pupils with the successful businessman or the successful leader in the outside world. Thus the educator becomes repressed and suppressed in our civilization. As things stand, this condition cannot be changed from the outside unless the general public alters its standards of achievement 
which is not likely to happen soon. The great enemy of any attempt to change man's habits is inertia. Civilization is limited by inertia. Public opinion was made and changed formally by tribal chiefs, by kings, by religious leaders. Today, the privilege of attempting to sway public's opinion is everyone's. It is one of the manifestations of democracy that anyone may try to convince others and to assume leadership on behalf of his own thesis. The important thing for the statesman of our age is not so much to know how to please the public, but to know how to sway the public. In theory, this education might be done by means of learned pamphlets, explaining the intricacies of public questions. In actual fact, it can be done by meeting the conditions of the public mind, by creating circumstances which set up trains of thought, by dramatizing personalities, by establishing contact with the group leaders who control the opinions of the public. Shouldn't a leader of today be a balance of two characters saying these two statements to themselves? I must follow the people. Am I not their leader? And I must lead the people. Am I not their servant? Undoubtedly, the public is becoming aware of the methods which are being used to mold its opinions and habits. And if the public is better informed about the process of its life, it will be so much more receptive to reasonable appeals to its own interests. No matter how sophisticated, how cynical the public may become about publicity methods, it must respond to the basic appeals because it will always need food crave amusement, long for beauty, and respond to leadership. If the public becomes more intelligent in its commercial demands, commercial firms will meet the new standards. If it becomes weary of the old methods used to persuade it to accept a given idea or a commodity, its leaders will present their appeals more intelligently. Please, do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. Link to this book is in the description below, so buy it and read. Never stop learning. Thank you. Love and respect.